everybody. This is Dee Reinhardt with Illinois WorkNet. On the call this morning with me, I have uh, Olivia Grisham. Hi, and everybody. We um, also have Natasha, but I don't think she called in, so she'll just say hi in the chat pod if she needs to. And uh, we've got, oh, there she goes. We have uh, just a really short agenda today. So hopefully we're out of here unless you guys have questions, and we're always happy to answer questions for you. So please, by all means, if you have any areas that you need to cover, uh, please fill them into the question pod below where you've checked in, and otherwise you can type them into the chat pod. So how about if we get started, and Olivia is going to go over the dashboard. Yes, let me get my screen pulled up here. Can you believe it's June 2nd already? Oh, and everybody say congratulations to Olivia. She is a new bride. She got married <laughs> over the weekend. All righty. Dee, do you see the dashboards on my screen? I do. Can you enlarge okay. it just a little bit? Yeah. Alrighty, I'm just going to quickly, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to quickly run through um, the intake dashboard, the enrolled dashboard, and the intake projections. We're just going to cover some areas where we have some customers um, starting to accumulate. Um, our first row here is this missed orientation row. Um, we have 2,230 customers. If you have any customers who missed orientation, you can update their intake activities to specify what the next step is for that customer, whether they need to come for a follow-up, they may be just not interested in EPIC, um, they may be voluntary or they may want to participate in a different program. So if you can, update those intake activities and we can also help um, bulk upload or um, move customers if you have like a couple hundred customers who all need to be marked as something. Um, we can always help in doing that so you don't have to go into 100 people. We can have our programmers do that um, quickly. Um, and then down here in the application section, everything is all cleaned up, so that's great to see. Um, we don't have anybody with incomplete applications or any information that needs updated. We do have four customers ready for review by DHS, the eligibility review portion. Um, these customers, though, four, that's a decent number to have in there. They could already be scheduled to come in for follow-up. If they're not, we just need to get that marked as um, either they're not interested or they are interested and they're coming back in. And they're all in Cook County, one from each different office, so it's only <laughs> one per office. Awesome. Um, our next two rows are the needs to be scheduled for consent and missed consent. Um, we have seven people who need to go through random assignment and be put into the EPI system. Um, or either marked as not interested in that program. So we need to make sure we're getting those customers back in. And then we have one customer who is not assigned to a CBO. Um, we just need to get them assigned to the proper CBO, um, the one they want to do the training program with. And then they will be good to go. So the um, intake dashboard is really looking very good. You guys are doing a great job on keeping up with everything and making sure our customers are being marked properly so they flow through the dashboard. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is the intake projections. Um, we are, I'm actually going to be working today on getting those numbers updated so our programmers can get them all um, changed. So we'll be going out through the month of September. So we're going to add four more months onto our timeline. It only goes to May 2017 of now. Um, but on a, for statewide, we are at 78.5% of the way to our goal. So we're getting really close. Um, we just need to make sure we're continuing to get customers um, in and put through the orientation process. Um, region what 1 number, is... What number did we just settle on by the month for the whole state? We have to get 280 per month across yes. the state. Yes. Yes, I believe that is correct. And we're divvying them up by region. Yeah. So region one is 70.2% um, 
of the way towards their goal. Region 2 is 125.9%. They've reached their goal and then some. Um, region 3 is 55.4% of the way to their goal. Region 4 is 88.3% of the way to their goal. And Region 5 is 123 so they've reached their goal and then some as well. Um, so just continue to keep um, getting those customers invited and put into the system, and we will be at our 5,000 mark before we know it. Um, and I think later on our agenda we're going to talk a little bit about um, some potential, like what we're going to do after the 5,000 mark. We're still um, working to kind of figure that out with the study team, but um, we do believe we will be continuing to put customers through. Um, there probably won't be that random assignment portion, but we will let you guys know when we come to a conclusion on how we're going to handle that um, life after we've reached our goal. And so the next dashboard we're going to look at is the enrolled dashboard. We just have a few rows on here um, to cover. We have that referral pending, no contact from customers, recommend conciliation. Um, we have 104 customers in there. Um, you guys are doing a great job staying on top of those and getting those customers put through. And then we have the referral rejected. We have 35 customers who need to be realigned with the CBO. Um, or they may just not be um, proper for the EPIC program. They may be on, um, we may have different steps to take with those customers. Um, but one to thing, realign, go ahead. One thing that we are telling our CBOs now is, if they come to the CBO and they say they have a job, we are telling the CBOs to reject that referral and send them back to you and DHS so that you can budget their income and determine whether or not they are exempt or not. And then if they can still participate as an exempt participant, we will, we will continue with them. Um, and then, yeah, so for the referral rejected, if you want, if you need to realign them with a new CBO, we have to do that and on our end manually um, re realign them with that new CBO. So all you need to do is send me or the EPIC at email um, an email with the customer's other participant ID number, um, the new CBO they want to be placed with, and the training program at that CBO that they are going to participate in, and we can get them moved over. Um, and then our next row is um, we uh, split this section out a while back. Um, we have these two red rows right here, CBO recommending course of action. One is no longer appropriate for provider services. We have seven customers in there. And the second is DHS review recommends sanction. Um, most of our CBOs are using that no longer appropriate for provider services if they are told at the staffing by somebody from DHS that the customer is no longer appropriate. Um, and then the DHS review recommends sanction is obviously the customers that have been put through conciliation by the CBO and are now needing to be put through sanction. Um, so those are the only rows that we have in the enroll dashboard that you guys look at. Do you guys have any questions on any of these numbers or dashboards or anything? I don't see anybody typing. All righty. Well, that is all I have for you guys today. So we will just keep moving on with our next agenda item. All right. And so I have the honor of showing you guys what is coming up moving forward. And this is, uh, right now, this is what the dashboard is going to look like. As you can see here, um, we've got the four, the four new months added into the intake projections. It's probably going to peak and then have a straight line across um, something. The, the line will change a little bit, but probably not too much. And then the projection numbers will change with that. Um, so that's the uh, intake projection change. Uh, the other thing that I just want to remind you, and we are continuing. Oh, I'm so sorry, Lori. I forget to make my screen bigger. I apologize. You guys didn't want to look at that little inch by inch thing there? <laughs> All right, so we're just adding the four months at the end. The, the line is less steep. So it may show some of you getting to the line a little bit more quickly. 
but um, it, it it is going to make it easier uh, for us to show that the projections were there. Um, we still didn't make our goal in some of the situations, but okay. The other thing that we're continuing to work on is the staffing report with each of the customers. And I just want to remind you guys where it is. We will be doing a training with all of you so that you will be able to find the staffing report. And that way we won't have to curry the packages or fax them or do any of that kind of stuff because you guys will be able to access the packages directly. But it's under the bar graph item here and it's reports and then it is under the staffing report. And remember, you will be able to, we've just been doing some work on this because we found some um, things that we needed to enhance. Um, we'll continue to keep doing that. Uh, so you, then you would just check your agency, which office you're from, or which one you want to staff, what month you want to staff. And then you just have to click on the person after you have made all those filters. And if a customer has been, um, started, um, one of the things that we want to try to do is um, make the word say ready or ready for review so that you know that the package is ready for you to pick up on. And then we can, you can go in and print the package and, or print it because it prints up to a PDF and then you could uh, save that to your customer files. So this is going to be a really, really great tool once everybody is able to use it. it will hopefully save a lot of paper, we'll be able to do all of this um, paper transfer, file transfer electronically. The next thing that I want to show you is, and I'm going to go to a line on the dashboard here so that I can show you what's going on. This is uh, in test. So we have customers now that when they are exempt, you will now see a Okay, it's got to come up. I don't want to say it yet. Come on. You see a bright yellow line that says that the customer is exempt. So that is going to be less confusing. The, the customers who are ineligible will be red. The customers who are exempt and participating will be yellow and customers who are just flat out eligible will be green. So thank you, Pam. We like it too. Uh, we, I was rooting for a bright yellow like that, and I think Deidre suggested yellow as well. So that is something that um, we liked. Uh, another addition that I would like to see, I, I pushed it off so that on the eligibility review page, I would like to see an option where you can mark them as exempt there and it will automatically make them yellow on the progress page. But we've got to see if our programmer can get that done. Uh, then the, the uh, that, so that's it for now for any updates that are applicable to you guys. We've got some reports that um, are being modified uh, because we changed some words. But those are uh, things basically that the admin team uses. So we just want to remind you that there are some customers um, that we need, or we need to push some customers to some of the agencies. And let me uh, minimize my screen here so that we can show you. Uh, we have Albany Park, OAI, Jane Adams, Southland Healthcare Services, and Asian Human Services that we're trying to support them with the um, with moving some customers to them or uh, assigning, assigning some customers to them. So if you can keep them in the back of your mind that they need customers and if the program is the same, um, the customers, th those agencies would love the customers, put it that way. So then, so then that would be a, uh, a nice perk for them as well. All right, I don't see any other questions. 
And you're welcome, Deidre. So if there is, oh, oh, somebody was asking about enrollment dashboard on here. So if we have a question there about enrollment dashboard, please type it into the chat pod. Um, okay, do we recommend the agency to the client over other agencies they choose? Well, on the um, eligibility review page, they can pick, and let me, uh, let me see if I can get here. Let me make my screen bigger again. So, oh, we have no, let me go to a different customer. All right, eligibility review. Okay, oh, goodness gracious, that one only has one. <laughs> Let me try somebody else. Uh, we'll try a Corolla car here. Okay, so for example, on this particular customer, they have all of these programs, all the check marks are all programs for which they are eligible. If there's two equal programs, try and push them to the ones that don't have as many customers. If they're, if they're equal, if the, the time is equal, the distance is equal, all of the other features are equal push them to the, the agencies that need the customers. Otherwise, let them pick, because it is customer choice. So um, with you guys at the northern office, they're going to be they're going to be traveling pretty much anywhere, uh, it, because there are no agencies in your exact neighborhood. So if you can work with it, work with it. Otherwise, let them pick what they want and where they need to be. We're not, we're not saying that you have to use those particular agencies. We're just letting you know that those agencies could still, could really appreciate the customers. All right? Um, and then who had a question about the enrollment dashboard or the DHS policy? And Olivia, what was the question about the reverse referral. Were you in the room when um, Leslie Bates asked the question about the reverse referrals? And uh, oh no, oh, and let me remind everybody: uh, work experience, work experience, paid work experience that the CBOs are using to help the customers does not get budgeted against their income. And that is listed on the DHS screen. Can you find that real quick, Olivia, the, the policy about yeah. the – I thought we had it in a notepad over here on the provider side. Yeah, I thought we did too. But if you can find that. Um, the, the customer's work experience – income does not count against their intake budget or income budget. I, I don't I don't see it over there. Yeah, I'm not seeing it either. We did share it out in one of the webinars and it is policy on the DHS page. It is not policy that we created. It is um, policy that your DHS team did indicate. And um, let's see, what else? I can't think of anything else. So does anybody have the question that they wanted to ask about the enrollment dashboard or the DHS policy? And if you did not already check in, please check in by what region you are in. Here we go. I found it in some notes. 
on this. Do you want to put it in a notepad, and then we can just pull it over? Yeah. All right, we got a couple people typing. You got it all in there? Yeah. All right, so here's the... Here's the policy. This was on the DHS page. So if you guys want to read that, will the income show in any of our clearances? I don't know what you mean by the clearances. If so, workers may need specific training on this, or they will automatically budget. I, Laura, I don't know what you mean by the clearances? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think it shows up on the work number. I don't know what AWVS is, but um, they they are uh, the CBOs are supposed to be listing it on the 2151A as work experience and how many hours, and they then the CBO is the employer of record. Oh, Tammy, you're on the call. Let me open up your mic. i got to find your number. There you are. Unmute. Go ahead. Okay, you should be able to talk now, Tammy. Hey, good morning, everybody. Yeah, I was just getting getting ready to type. The CBO is the employer of record, and they will not probably show up on the work number. And once again, I don't know what the AWVS is either. But this is just short-term training, so it could be anywhere from maybe 8 to 12 weeks, and it's usually not full-time. Um, but this was one of the um, items that was discussed when we were originally looking at this program, and FNS made that you know exempt from budgeting. Um, because it was kind of productive to, you know, to make them ineligible for SNAP benefits when you're trying to, you know, put them in training programs. So there's the item. I just enlarged it. Okay. All right. Any other questions? All right. If not, we will talk to you on June 16th. Everybody have a fantastic weekend. Um, let me pull this down and over here a little bit. Does somebody have a question about consent, or did you just kind of check by accident? All right, have a great weekend.